Welcome to Right on the Money, the weekly talk show with interviews you can use to help you maximize your money and optimize your financial future. Before moving forward with any of the ideas discussed on the show, always consult your financial advisor, insurance professional, or tax consultant. Looking for financial help or a second opinion? We can help you in your search. And now, your host of Right on the Money, syndicated financial columnist and money color commentator, Steve Savant. Well, welcome back to Right on the Money and Happy New you to you and yours and i am steve savant syndicated financial economist and money color commentator in this segment we're talking about paying down debt and creating cash flow there's a new one with tommy hegna nationally recognized retirement speaker and best-selling author and tom uh, that's the end game we're talking about managing debt i don't see the world doing this i don't see our u.s government or states doing this but we have to do it we have to for yeah. our family absolutely so i'm looking at this our president andrew jackson the 20 dollar bill right i think that's the one they're trying yeah. to change right the cover of the, right. the he says when you get in debt you become a slave you think that's too strong no well i mean look it's like i said in the last segment if you use debt wisely but mm -hmm. most people do become slaves to debt because they they don't they don't manage it it's too mm -hmm. easy it's too easy to spend it now all you're doing is taking from your future and spending it today and if you take all your future and you spend it today what is your future going to be it's mm -hmm. going to be much reduced and they forget about the reduction of the future they like spending it today well think about it we're talking about the i just told andrew jackson president how about president thomas jefferson he said never spend money before you have it. Right. Again, cash is king and you should pay cash for things. Don't use those credit cards. Those credit cards can, 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 you gotta be very disciplined, very disciplined. I think when we talk, look about this, we're trying to come to a place where we don't become indentured servants to debt. That's really the bottom line. Right. And so well, our goal is we want our families to be prosperous. We want America to be prosperous. We do. And we just have to get a handle on our debt. Now, maybe it's going to be reversed. Maybe the consumer is going to show the way to the government at the state level and the federal level to show the way, the, be an example. And that's one of the goals. I mean, I saw one of Dave Ramsey's burning mortgages online. Right. I mean, getting out of debt. Can you imagine being four? The last one I saw, I think, was like 44 years old, and he doesn't have a mortgage anymore. Right. How happy is that family? Well, they're happy. I mean, I've I've not had a mortgage for quite a few years, and I'm happy about it. Um, you know, getting out of debt is is so important. Uh, look, there's some ways to get out of debt. Like, if mm. you're in debt, there's there's some different strategies. And you quoted Dave Ramsey, and, you know, I, I say I, I agree with about 85% of what Dave Ramsey says, and I'm all for what he says about getting out of debt. Mm -hmm. He doesn't really understand some financial products fully, mm -hmm. but he does understand debt, all right? Because I, I think he mm -hmm. did go bankrupt or he had, he had financial problems. But look, there's a several strategies. So one of the strategies, Steve, is you start with the highest interest rate. So if you got five credit cards and one's paying 14, one's 15, 16, and you got two that are 21, you might want to start with those 21 mm -hmm. percenters and pay off the highest interest rate first. There's another strategy that says pay the smallest debt first. And you say, well, why would you want to do that? Well, because each of these come with a minimum payment. And as you can start knocking off mm -hmm. um, the, 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 the number of minimum payments, you can add more to your other. So if you can start, let's say you've got two that are really small and mm -hmm. one that's really big, knock those two out first and then really attack that bigger one. Okay, and again, our whole reason for doing it is not only getting out of debt, but we're trying to create cash flow so that we can start saving vehicles, which we're going to talk in the next segment. Now, when I'm talking about sometimes, like you said, which one are you going to do first? You need to look at both sides of the equation. Right. And I like to see what kind of cash flow I can develop almost from the get-go if it's possible. Right. Now, when I'm thinking about this, I'm looking, I'm looking at my savings accounts. You know, we talked about this in the last segment. The traditional thinking was 90 days. Now we're trying to create six months of savings. Not yep. just 90 days, six months. And to your point, I think I'm looking at the new strategy of trying to buy, like you, you said, you bought your truck. I, it wasn't new. No. And we, so we're looking at new strategies all the time to see if we can buy, well, maybe not an appreciating truck, but one that we've already down, it's already discounted and we're paying a less price for it. Right. On depreciating assets, you want to pay as little as possible. Mm -hmm. You want to get the best value, okay? Mm -hmm. On appreciating assets, again, you want to you want to buy when it's low and, and you want to sell when it's high. Mm -hmm. um, but another strategy for paying off debt would be, you know, just simply pay off more than the minimum. If the mm -hmm. minimum is 75 bucks mm -hmm. a month, send in 100, send in 150, send in 125. I think Dave Ramsey kind of came up with this thing called snowballing. And snowballing is a way that what you do is you pay... You pay the minimums on most of them and you attack one of them. 
all right, mm-hmm. with with a lot extra, and you and you just pour extra money in there. Once that's done, you then move on to the next one, and you pay more on on that one. And so what you're doing mm-hmm. is, as you pay them off, you're snowballing so that you got more and more and more of your assets focused on fewer and fewer debts. Now, the key is you got to stop using that credit card. Right. You can't pay off this one and then run one up over here. And unfortunately, that's what happens to a lot of people. They pay off this one, but they're running up this one. And then they pay this one. It's like kind of like whack-a-mole. You know, they're mm-hmm. trying to whack-a-mole. You've got to stop the spending. Well, there are reduce people. Reduce the spending. There are people that are into their personal Ponzi schemes. I mean, doing exactly what you just said. They pay this one down. That looks great. FICO score goes up for a few days. You know, a few months, and then they're back over on another card. And by the way, I kind of tell you, I cannot tell you all my life how many cards I get invited to join with every year. Oh, yeah. I I shred them all. I put those in the shredder. You you know, look, I carry several credit cards. I pay the balance off Mm -hmm. every single month. I never carry a balance Mm -hmm. on a credit card. I pay it off every single month. Now, some people say you should cash out your savings. I would say you don't want to cash out all of your savings to pay off your credit card. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have excess savings, maybe you want to take some of it as earning 1% and you're paying 21% over here. It will work if you pay that off as long as you don't charge up a bunch more money. Mm -hmm. Some people have an emergency fund of six months and they say, well, look, if I took that and paid off a credit card, my credit card line of credit could be my emergency fund. That can work for some people. Like if mm-hmm. if you've got adequate resources and you've got you know a house that's worth money and you've got 401ks, you've got other assets. Yeah, I've used lines of credit as my emergency money at some points, mm-hmm. but you've got to be very careful uh, about doing that. Well, what about this thing? I've heard, I've seen talk. I've heard you talk about borrowing from now. Most people have life insurance, maybe not cash value life insurance. But yeah. for people who do have cash value life insurance, that interest rate's pretty low. Yeah, and you can borrow from your life insurance policy. You know, there's this whole thing out there, bank on yourself, you know, mm-hmm. bank on yourself.com. And what that is, is you just buy a bunch of whole life insurance and, and then you've got adequate resources that you can always borrow from mm-hmm. yourself and that you don't ever have to go to a bank. You don't ever have to go to a credit card, a uh, credit company. You can always just do it yourself with your with your life insurance policy. Because pretty low, pretty low number. Hey, but but what about borrowing from your 401k? I've heard traffic on this on the web. Yeah. Good and bad on this. Well, look, you got to be very careful. I mean, certainly you can borrow from your 401k, and when you pay it back, you're paying it back into your account. But here's the problem. If you lose your job or if you retire, you stop working there, you got to pay that back, and mm-hmm. you got to pay it back really immediately. I mean, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a little bit of a time frame, but not much. You've got to pay that back, mm-hmm. and if you don't have the money to pay that back, that's a premature distribution, penalty, and taxable. And think about it. Some employers, if you leave the job to go to another job, right, they're going to not transfer it until you do pay it back. Right. You so have there's to, issues. You there's have issues. to pay it back, so you, that wouldn't be very... You'd have to be very careful. Well, now, I know a lot of people say, hey, I've seen a lot of cards come out and say, hey, listen, low interest rate for 90 days. Sometimes that could be an arbitrage way to pay down your debt if you really dedicate it for 90 days to play. What do you Absolutely. think Absolutely. You can, you can transfer to, a, to another card, get a low interest rate for 60, 90, mm-hmm. 120 days. But again, are you going to be disciplined not mm-hmm. to start charging up somewhere else? See, the key is you want to get out of debt. You don't want to keep staying in debt. Mm-hmm. And so at some point, it all comes down to you have to spend less than you make. Mm-hmm. That's what it comes down to. Right now, too many people are spending more than they make, Mm -hmm. and you can't do that. You've always got to, my entire life, I've spent under what I made. Even when I was a second lieutenant in the Army, made $13,000 a year, I spent less than that, all right? And then with every pay raise, what I did was I took half my pay raise and I put it towards savings, Mm -hmm. and then half the pay raise towards increasing my standard of living. And it worked out very well. I did it right out of the gate. You know, I'm thinking... When we're talking about reducing debt, we have to be talking about creating a budget too. And so we're going to spend a whole show on how to make a budget, create a budget. This is really something. But you said you said cut spending. I mean, everybody, I can't even get the government to give me a good example of this. They can't cut spending. Right. My state's not cu- cutting right. spending. My county's not cutting spending. Everybody around me is just rolling up the tab, paying more on their interest charge. When we're talking about cutting, it's it's tough. If you've had a certain lifestyle living off plastic, it's tough to migrate over to good budget habits. Talk to me about what would you cut spending first? What's one of the things you say, this would help you so much? It is not that hard. 
It is not that hard. Look, stop buying brand new cars. Go out and get a car that's a couple years old, 10, 10 12,000 miles on it. You get it for half price. If mm -hmm. you did that for the rest of your life, it's going to save you hundreds of thousands of dollars. Stop buying so much clothes. You know, go to Goodwill. Go to these, there's these secondhand places for clothes that have brand new clothes. They've never been worn. They still got the stickers on them, <laughs> but somebody bought them for, you know, $300 and they're selling them for $42. You know, go to go to some discount stores. Ross Dress for Less, TGS, G, TGX Max, Steinmark. Look, these places have name brand clothes, but you're not paying mm. name brand prices, all right? So, I mean, there's there's a lot of ways to do it. it you know, mm. I think it's ridiculous when people are spending so much money on stuff that, that they don't even need. I want to thank Tommy Hagner for being my guest. But before I go, remember what the good Reverend John Wesley once said, make all you can, give all you can, save all you can. I'm Steve Savant. We'll see you next week right here on Right on the Money. For more information on this week's money topics, just go to our website at www.rightonthemoneyshow.com and follow Steve's daily postings on Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. When it comes to retirement, money management, small business, insurance coverage, college funding, or budgeting, we have the interviews you can use.